are coming, budget balancer. Come in, bread and water. Good morning, Miss Harlow. Good morning, Judy. I thought you were going to devote all your time to studying the seabird. Oh, but I have studied my part, Miss Harlan. I didn't think you'd mind if I read this, though. I mind anything that keeps you away from learning your lives. Oh, but this book is about... I don't care what it's about. Oh, you. Me? Oh, uh, I haven't lived that much. Oh, really? It's not just about you. It's, it's about a lot of stars from the theater and pictures. Biography, you know. Did you really play opposite Jack Barrymore on the stage? Mm -hmm. And did you make a silent picture with Valentino? Really? I really did, really. And I was born in 1899, too. Gosh. Oh, but uh, weren't you a duchess or something for six years? No, Judy. I was on the stage on Broadway in a play called My Last Duchess for 1,664 performances. Gee, 1,600 performances. Well, didn't you get tired of doing it, Miss Harlan? I would. Every performance is a new experience, Judy. Each one is just a little bit different. It's challenging and exciting. That is, if you're really an actress. Well, Daddy says you were so wonderful in The Duchess that Hollywood made you come out here and become a big star. Daddy says he just doesn't understand why you haven't made any pictures lately. You're a... Uh... Daddy seems to have an infallible memory. Now, we're playing you here. Oh, I'm having an awful time with this last act. Why does she keep saying that she's a seabird? Is she crazy? Judy, did you read the play? I've been too busy with this. But you have to always read the play. How do you expect to develop the character? Unless you've read it. Here, let's stop with our exercises. Oh, no! Who called? Oh, Jim! Hello, Auntie. Oh, oh, how nice. Oh. Darling, did you fly down from Palo Alto? Well, it felt like flying when George's brakes wouldn't hold coming up the ridge this morning. Of course. You're here for the Stanford SC game. Well, sort of. That is, George is here for the game. I just wanted to see my favorite aunt. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true, but it's very sweet of you to say so. There's some girl. Oh, uh, there's only one girl in my life. <laughs> Besides Mamie and her cook. Oh, darling, she's not here. She uh, couldn't stay on after Jones left. Where's Jones? Well, uh, uh, oh, it was awful. You know, he started uh, nipping and I had to let him go. It isn't as if I needed a butler. Uh, you know, there's no sense in trying to replace him. After all these years, it wouldn't seem right with someone else. Come on, sit down. I want to hear all about the neutrons and electrons and how you're working with them. <laughs> oh, you're cute. But you wouldn't understand a word. No, of course I wouldn't. But I'm a very good actress. I could sort of act as if I understood, and you wouldn't know the difference. What's that? How now? Who called? Nine unknown men. How now? Who calls? Nine unknown men. Oh. <laughs> Nine unknown men. Dramatic How lesson. Now? I left her off there to practice. Like that? That's a pretty good indication that she's a born actor. She is enchanted with the sound of her own voice. Oh, that's a great reading. Next, you'll tell me you're teaching her because her latent talents inspired you. <laughs> no, I'm being amused. I haven't been able to find a good script. Thanks. You're not a very good actress. Well, now, how would you know? You only know about numbers. <laughs> no, I mean figures. Oh, that isn't right either, is it? <laughs> Darling, it was a good try. But Jones is a teetotaler. If he hadn't been, Mamie would have kicked him out and stayed on with you. And a star like you could never be amused by giving dramatic lessons. You haven't done a picture in a long time, Aunt Eleanor. I'm going to leave Stanford and get a job and start paying you back as fast as I can. You're going to do nothing of the kind. But Aunt Eleanor... Jim, listen to me. You are not taking anything away from me. You're giving me something. I'm being selfish, I know. You're going to be a great man, Jim. And long after Eleanor Holland, the star, has been forgotten, I shall be remembered for having sent the great scientist Jim Miller through school. I can't let you do it. You're not going to stop me. That is for sure. Oh. 
For heaven's sake, why, I put it on the wrong bank. Now, isn't that ridiculous of me? Oh, don't you worry about it, darling. As soon as I finish with this lesson, I'll take care of it. I'd better get out to this young child because she might break a vocal cord here. Don't you want to rummage around the kitchen? Well, I've got a couple of errands I can take care of. Oh, all right, fine. And then you come back for dinner. We'll have a nice talk. In the meantime, don't worry, I'll fix this little silly thing. And uh, I want you to take your tuition back to school with you. Okay, see you later. You're sweet and romantic, but don't worry about me. Bye. Bye. Dinner. not duty, Tuesday, not Tuesday. You haven't worked, you haven't worked on anything. Your diction is even worse. Oh, but I don't want my diction to be too good. It'll take away from my individuality. Oh, but I do know a speech from the seabird. I know it very well, Miss Holland. All right, all right, all right. I love you. I love you. I love you to exasperation. Well, that, that isn't right, is it? It's desperation. I love you. I love you. I love you to desperation. Stop it. Stop it. I, I, I cannot stand it. I'm sorry, but I no longer can teach you. Hello. Leo, I have just kicked Judy Schwartz halfway to Wilshire Boulevard. Are you off your rocker? I don't know. What am I going to do, Leo? I'm your agent, dear, not the village priest. Leo, I, I must see you. Well, all right. You come by the office about 1 o'clock. We go out to lunch and talk it over. But in between now and then, you patch it up with Judy. You get her back. I will. That's my girl. My office at 1, then? At one. Judy. I, I forgot my book. I want to apologize for behaving so badly. It was inexcusable. Oh. I've been under a dreadful strain. But that's all right, Miss Holland. It was my fault, too. Oh, I should work, but... I just can't put my mind to it. Am I forgiven? Oh, don't be silly, Miss Harlem. I'm used to having people blow up at me. Oh, I'll be back Thursday at the regular time. I'll, I'll learn it, I'll work at it, and I'll get it. Judy, you're too nice a girl for all this nonsense. You won't work. Oh, but Miss Harlem... You see, I should never have taken you in the first place. Your father persuaded me. Oh, there are plenty of good coaches, but even if you do work hard, You'll just be adequate. Frankly, that's not enough. Hello, dear. Hello. Sit down. Well, you're looking sleek, considering the fact that you probably haven't got enough money in your pocket for a decent meal. Ah, but my agent is taking me to lunch. Are you a good girl? Angelic, if you're talking about Judy. We forgave each other, and I told her to take up snake charming or men or square dancing, but to keep away from the theater. You know, she was very nice about it. I don't think she cared much. I was afraid of that. After all, $50 a week is not the answer to my maiden prayer. No? Leo, can't you get me work? Not at your prices, dear. If I could afford to let you work for $500... I'd love week, to work for $500. Can't let you do it. Why not? I've told you. If people find out that you're on the skids, that's all there is to it. Right now, they think you're living in the lap of luxury, waiting for the perfect part. Now, let's keep it that way. Leo, I, uh, I need $1,100. You what? I need... Never mind, I heard you the first time. What is that? Uh, Jim's tuition, lab fees, room and board, and plus a check for $100 It bounced. Why doesn't that boy take care of himself? I don't want to be maudlin, but... Well, Jim is more than just a nephew. 
If my sister and his father were alive, but they're not. Jim, well, he's all I have left. Yes, I know. I thought it might be nice if he worked his way through college, that's all. Well, come on, let's have lunch. We'll figure out something. Shrimp salad for two and some coffee. Now, for dessert, Eleanor, you're going to eat humble pie, and I'm going to serve it to you. Hmm. Well, and in that case, I'll take it as a first course. The moving picture rights for my last duchess have been bought for Frank Lord. Frank Lord? They're going to start shooting as soon as they get a cast. That fraud. He's deliberately bought that play to spite me. Who's doing my part? Hasn't been cast yet. Oh, I could kill him with my bare hands. Well, if you did, you'd be killing one of Hollywood's young geniuses. Leo, why couldn't someone else have bought it? Anybody. That was one of the greatest parts I ever had. I could work for the rest of my life on the strength of it. Jim could... Leo, no one else in town can touch that part. I know it, dear. I think Frank knows it, too. Does he? Not if what I read in the columns is true. He certainly doesn't. Why, when he first started flinging mud at me, I didn't even remember who he was. When you found out, you had some pretty neat replies. The ten most uncooperative actresses I have ever worked with are Eleanor Holland. I should have pushed him headfirst into the orchestra pit 12 years ago. Oh, well, didn't you? You know, I've heard so many versions of the famous Eleanor Holland, Frank Lord, few that I don't know what to believe. Well, I can put you straight on it. It's not my happiest memory, but it is one of the clearest. It was during the dress rehearsals of my last Duchess in New York. And as I recall, still put to death for love of country. There's yet my life to give, and probably I shall give it, as he gave his. That you can tell your master. Uh, y yes, my lady. Oh, Captain Harry, Harry. All right, I'll let right away. Why can't you give me another time to do that thing? I don't want to say it. Yes? Miss Hollum. Miss Holland, please give me another chance. I won't miss that cue again, I promise. I don't know, it's nervous. It's my first show on Broadway. I need this job. Young man, where are you from? California. It's bitterly cold here in New York. In California, the sun is shining. I suggest you go home and enjoy it. But, Miss Holland... My dear boy, you are not an actor. No wonder he's devoted to you. You were just as sweet to him as you could be. I was cruel, I'll admit it. But it would have been much more cruel if I hadn't told him the truth. You cannot tell a lie, can you, George? I've lied about a lot of things. Men, the amount of money I've earned, love. But there's one thing I have never lied about, acting. Eleanor, I want you to let me ask Frank to give you that part. Absolutely not. In the first place, I couldn't turn in a performance with that pig-headed idiot directing. Did you ever see the Oscar that pig-headed idiot got for directing? No, nor have I ever seen one of his pictures. Oh, Leo, I could no more work with him than I could... Well, anyway, he wouldn't give me the part. We'll never know till we ask him for it. How he'd love to turn me down. Why, he'd feed it to every columnist in town. He's been waiting for something like this for many years. No, I will not put myself in that position. How about the position you're in? Oh, I'll give you the hundred dollars to cover the check. But I can't give you a thousand dollars. All right. That's my girl. Yes? Eleanor, I'm sorry. You were right and I was wrong. I should never have let you stick your neck out like that. He's still sore at you. Where does Frank Lord live? Oh, wait a minute, Eleanor. You can't go up there. Where does he live? The Benedict Canyon. It's the Yellow Road. It won't do you any good. Now, you sit on your phone, Leo. Good afternoon. I've come to see Mr. Lord. Yes, Mother. He's expecting you. I'm... Not sure. Yes, Miss Holland. 
Eleanor Hollam. Genius has taste. Well, Duchess. I wasn't sure I'd recognize you. But of course I, I do. That's very gratifying. I had no idea when we last parted that I'd made such an impression on you. I wish you'd sit down. I'm sorry? This won't take long. I want to know why you won't give me my part in... Laugh, Duchess. I should think that would be self-evident. Personal antagonisms have nothing to do with business. You know, I could make that film for you. Besides, I've made all the overtures, done all the groveling. I can't see that it involves any loss of face for you. I didn't think you'd go this far. I don't get it. What's your angle? What would make you come crawling all the way up here to me? You've got a bet on with someone that I'll weaken. Is that it? Is it your plan to get signed up for the part and then walk out on me? It isn't as if this were the last part you'll ever play. I... I've got it. Hallam, you're broke. Yes, I'm broke. I have no prospects of a job. I need money for my, for my nephew's tuition. I'd do anything, even work for you, to get enough money to pay that bill. You must have made millions. What did you do with all your money? What difference does it make? Huh, too many parties, too many husbands, I don't know. Well, you've been honest. I guess it's my turn. I bought the rights to my last duchess, partly because it's a good story. But mainly because... I wanted to make a heck of a fine picture out of it starring someone else just to show Eleanor Hallam. Very elaborate revenge. You were born into the theater. You were a hit at 18, so obviously you had no conception of what that first part meant to me. It meant eating, for one thing. After six years of pounding the pavements and sleeping in cheap rooms. It meant not having to go home to an unsympathetic family and to a town that had always laughed at me. That night that you kicked me out of that play, I decided that I'd show you but that you actually come begging to me for a part is... Well, I came. You feel any better? <clears throat> I never felt better in my life. I think I'll go. I haven't finished. You wouldn't know it. But I sneaked into nearly every performance of the Duchess before I left New York. You were the most magnificent thing I've ever seen or hoped to see. And when I'd see that other boy on the stage with you in my part, I could have choked you both for what I'd missed. Of course, you know, I've tested nearly all the character actresses in town for that part. No use. Do you want to know why? Because I keep hearing you do it. Am I surprising you? Yes, you are. Alan, I'm going to give you that part. On one condition. 
admit just to me that you were unfair, that you had me kicked out on a whim without giving me a decent break. Say it. Just once, and I swear I'll never mention it again to you or anyone else. Now say it. I'm too old to start lying now. You were a rotten actor, and I was right to boot you out. I can't make a dramatic exit because I have to call a cab. Do you mind if I use your phone? Patches! I was an awful actor, wasn't I? I've never admitted it even to myself, but I realize now. I think if you'd have lied to me, I'd have gone into a monastery. Look. We both know there's only one duchess. You'll still take the part, won't you? Uh, of course I'll take it. I want to call Leo. I told him to sit on the phone and he may be getting numb. Wait. Let me call him. He can come up tonight and we'll work out the contract, all right? All right. Everything's going to be fine now, duchess. Yes, I, I think it will. Have dinner with me to celebrate in public. Oh, I'd love nothing more, but I have a very important dinner engagement with a much, much younger man. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here. Save those. Save those for my last touches. We're going to need them. Oh, this is nothing. Wait until we shoot that last scene. You're going to have to follow me around with a mop. <laughs> Yes, my lady. <laughs>